Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Spicy Caramel Chicken. That's right, we're going to do a new and improved version of one of our oldest and most successful recipes ever. Which was not that easy because the original caramel chicken was pretty much perfect. But we did make a couple minor tweaks, plus this time you get to enjoy all the caramely goodness in HD. But anyway, one thing that hasn't changed is that this recipe is still very fast and very, very easy. So let's go ahead and get started with the sauce, and for that we're going to need some freshly grated ginger root. So we'll take a nice big peeled piece of ginger, and we'll grate a couple tablespoons. And for this, my favorite thing to use would be the microplane, because you're going to get something that's grated very, very fine. It's almost a puree. So we'll go ahead and we'll do a couple tablespoons of that. And sure, I could have grated this right into the same bowl we were going to mix the sauce in, but that would have been too easy. So let me transfer that into our mixing bowl, and we will add the rest of the ingredients, which include some freshly and finely minced garlic, and then because this is a caramel sauce, we're going to need some sugar. So we'll do some light brown sugar. And then to balance the sweet, we're going to need some sour and some salty. So we'll go ahead and we'll add some rice vinegar, as well as some fish sauce. And if you're not familiar with that, it's actually a condiment made by fermenting pureed fish. I know, it sounds good, doesn't it? But kidding aside, it actually doesn't taste anything like fermented fish. And it's a key ingredient here, so do not skip it. And then we'll finish off with a spoon of soy sauce, as well as a little bit of hot sauce. I'm using the sriracha. And then all we'll do is take a whisk and mix that up. So as promised, a very simple sauce. And once that's set, we can move on to the chicken. So in a bowl, I have a couple pounds of boneless, skinless chicken chunks, which have been cut into, I don't know, about one inch pieces? Something like that. And yes, I'm definitely using chicken thighs for this. And as always, if you want to use chicken breasts, that's up to you. I mean, how am I going to stop you? But I will say, I think the thighs work significantly better. And then what we'll do is we'll take about a quarter cup of that sauce mixture and pour it into our chicken. And then we'll take a spatula or a spoon, and we'll mix that until we're sure all our chicken chunks are coated. At which point, I just want you to let that sit there on the counter for 15 minutes. And the reason we're going 15 minutes is because that's how long it should take you to prep the rest of the ingredients. Which include, from right to left, some chopped cilantro, also known as chopped coriander in some of your stranger countries. We're also going to use some chopped green onions, as well as some roasted peanuts, and some sliced peppers. I'm going to be using some green jalapeno and some red Jimmy Nardello. Yes, that actually is the name of a pepper, and apparently one of the Nardello boys. And then as soon as we have all that together, we are ready to head to the stove and cook this up. So I put my heaviest, largest cast iron skillet on high heat, along with about a tablespoon of vegetable oil. And as soon as we see that oil start to smoke, we're going to carefully place in our chicken, which if using a nice big pan like this should fit in one layer. So we'll spread out those chicken chunks. Ideally, every one of them is in contact with the pan. And then all we're going to do is cook this stirring until all that chicken is caramelized. And don't be discouraged by the slow start, because at the beginning here things are going to be a little bit watery, but thanks to evaporation, eventually things are going to thicken up, and that liquid's going to start to get syrupy. And once that happens, I'll switch to this wooden spatula, or something similar, and we'll cook this stirring until, like I said, everything is very well caramelized. See that one piece there? It's already getting browned. That's how we want all these pieces of chicken. In fact, even darker. So we'll just keep our heat on high, stirring pretty much continually. And while this recipe is very, very simple, it does require a little bit of courage because we really do want to let this get quite dark. I mean, it's called spicy caramel chicken, so there has to be actual caramelization. And as it starts to get more and more caramelized, what people do is they'll question whether they're going too far and they'll start to visualize failure instead of success. Never do that when you're cooking or anything else for that matter. Always visualize perfection and work back from there. And not only is this an appearance thing, but it is critical for the taste. That's literally what gives caramel chicken its flavor. And the more we caramelize that sugar, the less sweet it becomes. So very important you let it go at least this far. And then once our chicken chunks have been caramelized, let's go ahead and back our heat down to medium and move to final assembly. So at this point, let's go ahead and dump in our sliced peppers, as well as our roasted peanuts, and of course, chopped green onions. And we will stir that in and we will cook this for exactly one minute at which point we will dump in the rest of the sauce. And there should be a ton of heat still left in that pan, which is why we reduced it down to medium. But of course, if you want to increase your heat, go ahead. It will thicken up a little faster. But anyway, I stirred in my sauce, and in just a few short minutes, my sauce had heated through, started to simmer, thickened up a little bit. And if everything's gone according to plan, it should look something like this. If for whatever reason your pan was too hot and this got way too thick, way too fast, add a splash of water or chicken broth. So you always have that option. And at this point, we'll turn off the heat, and we'll give this a taste. Ouch. 
And pro tip, feel free to use the utensils to avoid burning your fingers. So I gave mine a taste, and it was perfect, and yours will be too. And that will bring us to our last official step. I'm going to stir in some freshly chopped cilantro. And once that's incorporated, we are ready to serve this up. And this stuff is great on anything. Actually, that's not true. It really should go on rice. And what if you're on a low-carb diet? Too bad. No one's last words on their deathbed have ever been, I'm so glad I ate caramel chicken on cauliflower. So serve it up on some rice. And we'll finish off with a little bit of green onion. And that spicy caramel chicken is done. And every bit as beautiful and delicious as the version we posted eight years ago. And not only is this chicken shiny and beautiful, the combination of flavors in this are just amazing. You got your sweet, you got your sour, your salty, your hot, your bitter, and definitely umami. Oh, there's umami out the yin yang. And thanks to those crunchy roasted peanuts, even the texture is interesting. So for me, this is the total package. And I know I should be using chopsticks. Yes, I know how. Oh, I'm fine with the meat. But I can't be eating one or two grains of rice at a time or transferring peanuts into my mouth one by one. So I've never quite perfected the shoveling technique with the chopsticks. But I tell you what, I promise to practice that if you promise to practice this, okay? So I really do hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.